What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the cauldron. Oh, wait a minute. We we broke the cauldron. Uh, we'll just call it part 11 then. Welcome to part 11. God of War Ragnarok with a therapist. I am grateful for your presence in these VODs. It is lovely to have you here. I would love to have you here live sometime if you come hang out with us on Twitch, but I get it. My hours suck ass, so you're here on YouTube, and I'm really grateful for that. If you want to be an awesome citizen of YouTube, thumbs up, comment down below. I appreciate the engagement. Thank you for sharing my stuff. It really does mean a lot to me. Hang out in Discord. Check the links down in the description. We got all sorts of good stuff for you. I also make music if you want to listen to some cool, chill music. I had a new album come out recently at the time of this taping so you can go check that out on spotify or any other streaming service or youtube music if you want to just check it out there but anyway regardless i'm grateful for you being here and i'm excited for what part 11's got in store for us so let's make it happen we should get you back you've been gone longer than you think yeah you've been gone longer than you think <laughs> Inception, baby. Anchor Boda. It's fine. This was a long time coming. We'll be back once we reach the other side of this pass. Well, then, that's two out of three. Atreus. Race me. Come on. I see what you're doing. You know you want a rematch after and last time. I appreciate. Um, last time, I beat you. I'm. Pretty sure it was a tie. Pretty sure it wasn't. Hey, it worked. Nice job, buddy. He took a shot there. He really does like to... Atreus really does like to make people feel better. And I honestly, I give him credit for, for trying. All she has to say is, hey, I'm not in the mood. And then he can respect that boundary. So it's okay for him to take a shot at it. So prove me wrong. One, two, three, go! Fine. You coming or what? What? Go, go, go! She gets to ride what? Momo. Oh, no, you don't! Watch the turn here! Oh, okay. I have absolutely no idea what you're saying. This field always smells so amazing. <laughs> She's taking shortcuts. I don't think so. Whoop. Whoa! Are you really gonna let me beat you again? <laughs> no, you don't. Almost there. Whoop. <laughs> you really made me work for it. Work for it? He rode a magic fox the whole way. Loki, er, Atreus, thank you. I'm sorry she was so hard on you. Me too. Well, I suppose you're ready to get home now. I'll meet you by the shrine when you're ready. Do I have to leave? Not if you don't want to. Your prophecy was less clear on when you have to go. <sighs> My prophecy. When people first get to know each other and when they are experiencing vulnerability around some of the questions that they're asking or like the thing that they want to do, sometimes they will veil statements with questions. I've talked about this a few times in different playthroughs, but I'm going to talk about it again here because both Atreus and Anger Boda engaged in this. Every single question anybody ever asks is a statement. And in this case, my sense is that both Angerboda and Atreus would like Atreus to stay for a while. But instead of Atreus saying, I'd like to stay, or Angerboda saying, it'd be cool if you stayed for a while, dude. Never said you had to leave immediately. They ask questions instead. So he, Atreus says, do I have to leave? 
she and or you know do you do you want me to leave or whatever right like people ask these questions instead of just saying directly the vulnerable thing which is like hey if you're down i'd love to stay for a while and give her a chance to say sure that sounds great when you don't speak directly and you veil your statements and questions there's a sometimes a chance that you're going to end up missing the mark or that you're not going to have a resolution of the moment that would actually work out for both people here. They're dancing around saying the vulnerable thing instead of just saying it directly. And if that was to lead to Atreus leaving when neither one of them wants to leave, that's a real bummer. And it's because they didn't just say directly what they wanted. Give people an opportunity to say no. And then if you're on the receiving end of something like that, learn to be comfortable saying no if somebody says something or makes a request that you're not interested in healthy effective communication comes from speaking directly rather than veiling statements with questions there's a difference between curiosity based questions and questions that serve as an avoidance of the vulnerability that comes along with saying what you want you could stay like if you want Without souls, they've forgotten how to find food, how to run. Ooh. I bring them here because they won't survive on their own. But with those soul marbles, you could... No. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just... All of this. The prophecy stuff. It's too much. You grabbed more green bulbs earlier, right? You can go feed the animals if you want. Oh, so she liked that he used the thing to do that with the snake. I do appreciate that Atreus is aware that this is a lot for him to take on. Let's go see if there's anything else that we can chat with her about first. I guess we can, might as well check this too. think there's anything else for me yeah. Yeah. I haven't forgotten about you wall that I never climbed and it'll haunt me forever hey thanks for taking the time to find all those extra green bulbs the animals appreciate it and I do too oh uh you're welcome I had fun I liked hearing about how different they all are you really care about them huh I do Yeah. The puppies. Oh, I think it's about time for me to go, Angerboda. I have the wrath of a god of war that I have to deal with. And I also have the passive aggressiveness of a god of war of past yore, who I'm going to have to deal with here. It's just not, it's just not great. It's just not great what I got to go back to. I'd much rather stay here and paint with you. But now you got to go. You still don't believe it, do you? I can't. I think I'm being stupid. I think you care for your dad so much you can't conceive of a world where you let him get hurt. Mm. Mm. Pretty good. Come here. I need to show you something. I have an original copy of Casablanca. We could watch. Oh, wait. Oh, is this her mom? Laufe? My mother's? Oh. I wish it weren't empty, but. I 
You know how it feels to lose a parent, to lose both. Your mother may be gone, but your father, you've still got time to say goodbye. I know what you're trying to say. And I appreciate it. I do. But... I don't know. We've got to be more than a bunch of stories with our endings already written. What happens to you now? I don't know. Like I said, once you're gone, my part in this is over. So, you know, feel free to stay. <laughs> I think your part is as big as you want it to be. What are you gonna do? Oh, he could have kissed her, dude. That was your chance. No idea. But I can't just sit back and let my dad die. I gotta get back. Stars here are different. No. You just are. I am going to see you again. <laughs> sure. Okay, now. Close your eyes. And hold that tight. You don't want to lose it. Home. Think of it. Repeat it. Home. 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 Like that? Oh shit, now I'm in the cabin? No, bad, 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 bad. No. Oh no. Oh god. Oh Jesus. Put it in your bag, dude. Other home. Other home. Other home. Ah! Oh, God. Hey. Oh, my God. Oh, this is gonna suck ass. Oh my god. I gotta fight White Walkers. Oh, there's so many of them. Oh god. Oh shit. Gotta get back. 
back to Sindri's and figure out how to save father. And I gotta keep Ironwood and Angravota a secret somehow. What'd I get myself into? I still want to know how he got there. Oh, good lord. There's no way Thor and Odin don't have their thumb on this. There's no way. Oh, man. Oh, man. Where were you, Atreus? I had to take a shit. <laughs> and I really only like pooping at home. <laughs> I think we can all connect with that kind of energy, right? <laughs> oh my god. Better get back to Sentries before anyone notices. Before anyone notices. Oh my god. How long have we been gone? Those guys were frozen over. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. What were you thinking? I... I wanted to visit Fenrir. For two days. I... Do not lie to me again! Why did you come here? Alone? Do you seek death? No more than you. Then why? Why? Oh, what is it you will not tell me? I have tried to walk this path with you. We follow your every whim. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. Because all that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? I do not need you to protect me. Mm -hmm. You sure about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you know? I can't talk about it. But I just need you to trust me. You kept secrets, but I trust you. That's not the same. Why not? You hid things. Mother hid things. You had good reasons, and so do I. Why can't you just... That is actually a perfectly reasonable argument at this point in Atreus's development. But it is one that is built on a little bit of a fallacy. There is a tendency when children become teenagers for them to overly assume their adultness and the egalitarianism that comes along with that. And so there's a bit of a false equivalency here. And when Atreus says to Kratos, you hid stuff from me and I trusted you. Well, yeah, you were a kid. There's you couldn't you didn't you didn't have the ability to understand stuff in the same way that you do now and especially that you will in another 7 years. So it's not exactly the same, but it's also not wrong because Kratos has to come to terms with the fact that as his son gets older, his son is capable of gathering and understanding information on his own in a way that doesn't necessarily require him to be present. So these two things can exist simultaneously, which actually makes that a very mature conversation between the two of them. It sucks that this got interrupted by a battle, because there's a very real problem-solving, developmentally loaded conversation to happen between the two of them where they are realizing that the exchange of information at this point can be a lot more mutual in its nature than it was previously when Atreus was subordinate to Kratos by virtue of his development and being his child. So that's the first part. Second part is, I think... Kratos probably, like, Kratos obviously knows something's up. And like we talked about, I think, last episode, information is power. Is power. Having information that people don't know is a way to maintain power. And in the case of a teenager like Atreus, autonomy. 
But I think he is underestimating Kratos' ability to handle the truth. Because Atreus is projecting his fears and the intensity that he experiences around this onto his father, which is essentially him assuming that his father's reaction will be the same as his. And that's not true, necessarily. Kratos could absolutely take that in stride and be like, yeah, dude, I know that that's coming. And in fact, you trying to fight against all of this prophecy stuff may actually be more trouble than it's worth because I've been there. So to acknowledge the truth of what Atreus knows is to acknowledge something that's very deeply difficult for both of them in two different ways. For Atreus, it's hard because he loses his father, somebody that he cares very much about. And for Kratos, it means that when he dies, he can't protect his son. Like when he says, the only thing that matters is keeping you safe, Kratos dying means that he is no longer available to keep Atreus safe. So as we talked about, Kratos is oscillating back and forth between this idea that I want to take care of him. I want to make sure he's safe, but I need him to be able to take care of himself because I'm not always going to be around. And he dipsy doodles all over that at times being like, yes, I follow you, I trust you, and at other times I need to make sure that I protect you and keep you safe, and he's having a hard time getting into a space with that, and it's going to take time, and it's going to take good communication between the two of them. So, I mean, a lot of complexity there, but Atreus being gone for two days, Kratos knows him well enough to know that he's lying, and you can't force teenagers to say stuff to you. And Kratos is going to need to tread lightly around this because there is some merit in him saying, I'm going to trust you, but there is also merit in him saying, you know what, dude? You don't get the luxury of withholding this information if it involves me. If you're possessing information that doesn't involve me and doesn't involve what, I, like, what I'm going to have a role in, then yeah, hold on to it. If the information you have pertains to me and affects me, and you're not sharing it with me, that's shitty. And that is going to hurt my trust in you. Really tricky, man. Really, really tricky. Uh, Ekrail, thank you very much for the raid. Appreciate it. Oh, it feels so good to be Kratos again. Atreus, that'll really freak your dad out. Why won't you say anything? <laughs> 
I don't want to use that to heal. Before she talks, this, first of all, holy shit, is this awesome. My God. <laughs> okay. Wow. Before she talks, though, uh, just a little bit of, like, possible insight into what's going on for her. Every single time she has come after them, Kratos has spared her. Like, Kratos goes out of his way. <laughs> To make sure that they don't harm her. And I think this creates an extraordinary amount of dissonance in Freya when this happens. Because she is seeing Kratos act in a way that is almost unfathomable to her. How could you show me mercy? I've been trying to kill you forever and you just won't either let me do it or you won't kill me back. If I had to guess, maybe there's a part of her that kind of wishes that Kratos would kill her. Like, that the pain of losing Balder is so strong and she knows that Kratos can hold his own against her that if she can't kill him, well, fine. Kill me. I'd feel a hell of a lot better if you just got rid of me. And Kratos' refusal to kill her and to fight back Sends her into this like spiral of mercy of like, how, how does he keep doing this? Why are you keeping me alive? That is a level of leeway and mercy that I, I am not affording you. I keep attacking you relentlessly because of this. And yet you still find it in yourself to prevent your son from acting on this. What on earth do I mean to you? That you would do that. And by the way, if I mean that much to you, why'd you kill my son? Right? So there's just so much dissonance going on for her. And she is just this, like, incredibly tragic figure right now. Like, I get that she's relentlessly attacking us, but we can hold our own. So because we can hold our own and survive her, it's a little bit easier for us to access a bit of, like, empathy and understanding of her position. But it, it is, she is in knots when Kratos acts like this. Because it's not what she's expecting. And every time she won't kill him, she won't die. And she can't and she can't kill him because he holds his own. She probably knows if she kills Kratos, she's not gonna feel any better. Because really the person that she's gonna inflict pain on when she does that is Atreus. And if she inflicts pain on Atreus, it's going to remind her that her son is not available and her son didn't deserve to be in the pain that he was in, or couldn't feel, but was in in a very like objectively weird way because in fact he couldn't feel anything. So it's like, in killing Kratos, she doesn't do anything other than hurt Atreus. And she made it clear she doesn't want to hurt Atreus. So this is just an absolute mind screw on every possible level for her. 
and you can see her bouncing back and forth between that as this is happening. So I'm going to be really curious to see what happens here, but like her sitting there and just, oh, 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 I think is her brain having to process this immense amount of discipline or this immense amount of dissonance that's going on in her mind. Because she has an agenda, I think, beyond just kill Kratos. She's too smart to not have that. Oof. Oh, and another thing I'll say. Uh, <laughs> this also forces Freya to have to reconsider Balder. Because if Kratos was this killing machine who killed with indifference and didn't give a shit and wasn't thoughtful about this stuff, I think it would be a lot easier for her to confirm her narrative that her son was good and misunderstood and that Kratos is an asshole. But she is seeing somebody who is actively merciful, actively stopping himself from causing harm and thinking through his actions. What that's going to do to her is it's going to force her to consider the fact that maybe Kratos was onto something when he killed Balder, when him and Atreus went after it, or went after him and killed her, killed him. If this really merciful dude killed my son, maybe my son sucked. And if she engages with that, it really forces her to have to release this idea that she is supposed to avenge his death. And really, her frustration needs to be directed toward the fact that Balder couldn't feel anything and as a result kind of went off the rails. But she has used Kratos as a proxy. Like, it's what makes this so just unbelievably richly complex here. If he's merciful and he killed Balder, maybe Balder was the problem. That doesn't compute with the story that I've been telling myself for the last three years about why my son died. Maybe. For the moment. You're of more use to me. Alive. <clears throat> That's Home. Oh, really? You will tell the truth when I return. Now I must set things right. Um, we'll take him. Oh, your majesty. A pleasure to see you again. Bronifer. Do not let him out of your sight. You heard him, sunshine. Come on, get a move on. Refuse to remain bound to this realm. We travel to Vanaheim. Well, guess it's just us then. <laughs> One gateway to Vanaheim coming right up. not ready for that i was not ready to have brock sit there <laughs> it's like this uber powerful moment <laughs> he just he, he floats like a lead balloon man oh god it's so good it's <laughs> it's so good okay oh man the pacing Um, oh God. Okay. So Kratos sending Atreus back. I want to talk about that for a second. Um, <laughs> it's a dicey move. It's a really dicey move because... 
him keeping Atreus away from this stuff, I think, is going to further solidify this chasm between him and Atreus that, like, he's the one that's actually in charge and Atreus is still just a kid. And sending him back with Sindri to an extent is punishment, but also because this feels like a matter that he has to deal with. I could get on board with it of Kratos being like, this is between me and Freya, and I need to do this with her, and this isn't your responsibility. And also, Atreus, to an extent, has borne, like, he's bared the consequences of this. I'm going to be curious to see how he responds to that, because I don't know that I can predict it. I do think that Atreus might be frustrated or maybe a little bit relieved that he doesn't have to deal with uh, creating a story on the fly. He gets a little bit of a chance to, to actually cultivate a story, but I love that Kratos is continuing to reinforce that he knows that Atreus is lying because that's going to get Atreus up in his head and will potentially get him to spill the beans at some point. Like, There's a lot of there's a lot of pressure sometimes that gets put on people when we say we know that they have information that they're not sharing and it's actually true and watching the way that people compensate for that can give us a lot of information. Oh man. All right. Oh, I'm aware of all that Dante, but is but in terms of how Baldur showed up for us we had to do what we had to do right like i can i can be empathic towards what happened to Baldur and still hold him accountable for the way that he showed up in 2018. if you are still bound how will you travel i crafted a protection ward that'll keep me from being pulled out of the realm it should hold until i find what i need and what is that the source of the magic that binds me to midgard we're going to find it and destroy it. I will help you, but it will not change what I have done. I know. That's why I still might kill you when this is over. We going or what? Yeah, we'll see. I love the honesty. Like, I just, I love how directly they communicate with each other. It's great. Like, there's tension, sure, but, like, him being just like, yeah, man, this ain't gonna make you feel any better if I help you. And she's like, yeah, I'm still maybe gonna kill you. Like, it's great. At least we know what we're working with here. Love your hat, Brock. Good shit. All right, to Vanaheim we go. Ain't going nowhere without this. Sure. Where would you mug spouts even be without me? And what is it you expect to need Kratos for, Highness? Clearly you've been quite capable of breaking Odin's curses on your own. The other curses grew weak from Thimble Winter, but I still needed help to break them. This one is held strong. So all that trying to kill him, that's just your goddessy way of asking for help? I don't recall asking you to come along. It's because you didn't. I got an old drinking buddy I've been meaning to look up once this joint were back on the map. Got a hunch lending you mokes a hand's gonna end me up where I'm going. And what makes you think that? Cause last I heard tell, she was running with that beef wit brother of yours. Freyr... ...is not a part of this. Well, my hunch says otherwise. Scrote, too. <laughs> oh, boy. I can feel the pool of the Binding Curse. Its source is further in. Follow me. Good lord. Than a Mufelheim shit pit out here. I'm nearly as fragrant. Suppose Fimblewinter's to blame. But if it helps these two find peace... This is a temporary alliance, Mimir. Anything beyond that would require trust. Oh, please. You know damn well Kratos isn't the true cause of your suffering. You're both as much a part of my suffering as anyone. 
This is gonna be great. This is gonna be so great. Uh, I just want to say really quickly from like a game design standpoint. I give kudos to Sony Santa Monica for bringing Brock along on the journey here because I think for a typical lay audience enjoying the game, if you only had Kratos and Freya on this ride with Mimir, it would be really intense. And I think a lot of people would really struggle with this. Um, not everybody, but I think I, it would it would reduce the enjoyment of this so much. So I love that they put Brock in here from just from a creation standpoint to get people to be able to see what happens with Kratos and Freya as more palatable. That said, I really hate that he's here. I love Brock. I don't want him here. This would be so much more interesting for me if Brock was not here because it would really give us an opportunity to really see how Kratos and Freya navigate this. And I think Brock breaking this up at times is probably going to be frustrating for me because he's going to step in and he's going to try to cut the ice in a way that's going to prevent us from really being able to get in the nitty gritty. So we'll see what happens. I mean, maybe he goes away and finds his drinking buddy, but like it just... I'm, I'm preempting everybody's expectations. Like, I may get frustrated with Brock, and I'm going to try to curb that, but I don't like that he's here to cut the tension because there's some really good shit happening between the two of them, and I, uh, I'm really, really, really interested to see where this goes. I appreciate that Mimir wants to advocate for Kratos and is trying to tell Freya that, like, we're not the source of her suffering, but she knows that. She knows that. Yeah, pretty much, Kaistar. Yep. God, this is gorgeous. Oh, my goodness gracious. in the mood. What runs with no legs? Easy, a nose. You'll have to try harder than that, Brock. Just you wait, smart guy. <laughs> Freya's gotta be so frustrated with Kratos. Like, dude, we're here for me, and you're walking around just looting the forest. Come on, man. so close. Dude, I am like, I am like three pixels off on this freaking bird. Freya's like, dude, come on. Seriously? Sorry, Freya. If we're going to be in the forest, we're going to go through the whole forest. That's going to need more magic than we got on it. Okay. Come on. Let's find a way forward. I'm coming, I'm coming. Through here. Oh no. Something's wrong. My spell, I can feel it slipping. Well, it's thimble winter for you. You don't understand. I'll be torn from the realm. What can be done? 
something I was hoping to avoid. Seems I don't have much choice. Falky! <sighs> Come on, then. You had a way around Odin's curse this whole time. No. I discovered it once you unlocked realm travel. And it solves very little. This form is extremely limiting. That's Bimble Winner for you. <laughs> might be one of my favorite characters in all of video games. I just had like he is just so impeccably written. I it is like it is just perfectly I would love to have a beer with Brock. I really would. Oh, man. <laughs> Watch where you're going. The plants are extra. I told you. Prune it from a safe distance if you'd rather not get poisoned. Noted. Recognize this market. Villages would meet and trade here. Why'd they never rebuild? She's a very similar cadence in her voice to Anger Boda. Oh, oh God. Okay. I like scrapping dirt. Anger management, chest punch, nice. <laughs> Boy, you don't miss a scrap of loot, do you? Sure don't. No, sir. Where has everyone gone, I wonder? They must have withdrawn, hidden themselves out in the wilds, and covered their tracks with magic. No way of knowing how many are left or how to reach them. Aesir ran cockshot all over this place, huh? You can thank Mimir for that. War with the Vanir was never my idea. My idea was brokering the marriage to end it. A great success that was. Obviously, the peace was no less a disaster than the marriage. Did he invade again as soon as I was exiled? Answer the question, Mimir. A market, huh? Wrath of the Look Frost like Asian. Powerful ice beam that frost and oh yeah, I like that. Big fan. Big fan. Big fan of that. Looks like the uh, looks like the Dark Souls guy. Dark Souls guy came to Vanaheim and 
Ran out of flasks. Hey, look at that up ahead. No Estes in Vanaheim? That's Fimble Winter for you. <laughs> That's good. That's good. here would have made for a prime shop location dwarves in vanaheim that would be something to see you can see it now brock's here huh? all right where are we going <laughs> stirring up an awful scene why do you keep bringing him up my brother is no concern of yours do you understand oh i understand plenty i'd have to figure out something to go along with it but i don't disagree isaac yeah Frey laying down some uh, boundaries Kratos could back her up a bit and be like, yeah, dude, knock it off. The plant life grows more dangerous the further we go. Hope you're up for it, Dwarf. Listen, I know how bad it can get with one's own kin. Sindri and I were on the out so long, it was like not having a brother at all. Now nah, I take some of the fall for that on account of me walking out. But it never stopped me blaming him most. Any of this sound familiar so far? And what is your point? My point is, that weren't the end all of things after all. Once we got our heads right, it was like no time had passed. He went straight back to being as big a pain in my ass as he ever was. That's family. You gotta keep them close, or they make you good and crazy. Why do you think I need to hear any of this right now? My focus is on regaining my freedom, and I have no intention of being distracted. Look, all I'm saying is, if you happen to find yourself talking to your brother, maybe the worst words said between you don't have to be the last one said. Enough! When the day comes to face Freyr again, it will be when I am standing on my feet and free. Do you understand me? It will not be while I'm stuck in this preposterous situation. Got a case of pride, I get it. Hope yours clears up quicker than mine did. A touching story, that was. Bite me. You wish. 
Yeah, I gotta be a little hard on Brock here. This is a situation that many of us get ourselves into when we try to empathize with people, and in particular when we try to shift their behavior in some way, is we will often assume that if we had a situation that was mechanically similar, that we have more to offer. And this is a fallacy. In fact, sometimes when people have similar experiences, their advice and their offering is worse than a person who has no experience with that kind of situation at all. Because what we do is we fill in the gaps with our own assumptions and our own experiences. So Brock is taking his situation with Sindri and he is using that to fill in gaps and make assumptions about Freya's relationship with her brother and is assuming that they are mechanically similar, similar and thus will be process similar. And that's not true. And we do this often because we want to be helpful and Brock has some kind of motivation for trying to get her to change things up with her brother, but it's not actually helpful. And that's why Freya is setting boundaries and saying, basically, shut the hell up, dude. This isn't the space where I want to talk about this and you don't know my situation. If you continually get feedback from somebody where they either yeah, but you or they continue to suggest that you are missing the mark. You should shut up and be more curious about that person's situation instead of filling that person's situation in with your own assumptions and experiences because ultimately our subjective experiences are never going to perfectly align with another person. And you are far better off being curious about what's going on rather than trying to use your own experience and your own triumphs to apply that to her. The only caveat to this would be that if Freya asked Brock, how did you resolve things with Sindri? Because I'm going to have to confront my brother at some point. Then Brock can go wild and answer as much as he wants about what his experience was. But unsolicited advice from his own experience because he thinks it's similar because it mechanically looks the same. You're generally going to miss the mark. And I'm frustrated that he's not respecting her boundaries because she has made it very clear she doesn't want to hear about it. And it's not the time. Kratos could help here. Kratos could help and look at Brock and say, dude, shut up. She told you she doesn't want to talk about it. Knock it off. And he's not going to lose any cachet with Brock by doing that. And maybe Brock will do like, okay, uh, that's thimble women for you. You just have tough conversations. And like we call it a day there. He could. He doesn't have to. But Kratos is bearing witness to this conversation and Freya being distracted because Brock keeps bringing this up does have an impact on Kratos, which is, I think, why he could say something if he needs to. The only person here who is the evaluator of whether what Brock is doing is appropriate and helpful is Freya. And Freya has determined that what Brock is saying here is not useful to her at all, and she doesn't appreciate it. That's who we go with. That's the person who is the sole evaluator of whether Brock's doing the right thing. And so Brock needs to read the feedback that suggests that he's not doing the right thing and adjust his behavior accordingly. So gorgeous. Holy hell. Also, what?
there's a chest around here. Yep. <coughs> what do we got? CRN? Oh, there's N. Okay. What did Odin do to drive everyone away? What weapons did he make the dwarves build him? How much was just Mjolnir? Can one man do this much damage? Depends on the weapon and the man. Speaking from experience, hey, eh? those swords you got chained to your arms, big guy. Look at the moon. Oops. Oh god. Oh god. Sounds shiny. It is. I like shiny. It used to be filled with boats of people visiting from different villages. I've never seen it so empty. It's interesting to note that Angerboda tried to make similar comparison to Brock and Atreus about their parents being dead. Oh yeah, people do it all the time. That's why I wanted to make sure that I paused and made that point. <laughs> People always try to apply their own experiences to other people, which is a... Sometimes it's helpful, but people should approach you with that stuff. Like, trying to just throw it out there and make an ex making assumptions about people's experience based on your own is not generally good. The intent is good, but the impact is rarely what you, th what you think it's going to be. I have a little more leeway for Anger Boda because she's younger, but... Brock, hey, in this case. Wolvers, everyone shut your gobs. What are these? Startle me, will you? Come and get some. Oh my god! Oops. This is why I don't use the axe. That was wild. You can't do anything with that yet, it seems. Thanks, Freya. Man, he's like ripped that ch wolf's chest off. Like, god damn. If 
Then you want to keep your insides inside. By the way, YouTube and Twitch, thanks for being here. I appreciate y'all coming along with me on this journey. It's been a lot of fun to have so many cool people enjoy this with me. So whether you're here live or whether you're watching on YouTube, I really appreciate your engagement. I'm grateful for you taking the time. Thank you for supporting what I do. Uh, this is uh, it brings me great joy analyzing these games. Especially games like this that are so well crafted. So thank you very much. Yeah. All yours, big guy. Wow, Your thanks, man. Not receiving oh. visitors? I wouldn't know. They're not my people anymore. Give me a boost. <sighs> <sighs> Don't go telling no one about that. Run up! Bet you're glad old Brock's around to save your skin. Uh-oh. Yeah! We should probably go get him. Keep your guard up. Anything to loot first? Okay, let's go get him. Oh, jeez. I love Mimir's just like, all right. Quiet. Now, what do we have here? Oh, one eye, send another god to do his dirty work. Or too busy. We do not serve Odin. <laughs> no? Picked a dangerous place for sightseeing then. Am I right? No, no. No need for threats, brother. Is that. Oh, I know that. Prayer? Yep. Okay. You know, I'd cut off your head, but it seems somebody beat me to it. Aye, oh, quite observant, brother. Oh, no, you're no brother of mine. We sold my sister to that prick. We broke it a piece. Oh, did you now? Where is it? Hmm? And where is my sister? Some dungeon in Asgard? Is she even alive? Answer me. I guess we'll settle for blood. Stop! What is that? Why do you speak in her voice? It's me, Yngwie. There's no time to explain, just listen. These men are in my service. I'm here to reclaim what's been taken from me. It's too late. You can't undo what's been done. I can. I will. Now let them pass. So... You serve my sister. Oh. Oh. Don't we all? Put him down. What's with leaving me hanging like that, you crusty egg? Blobber, come here. Well, found who I was looking for. Think I'm gonna stay and catch up. Oh, are you now? Do as you wish. Brother, if you wouldn't mind, I'd have a word with Lord Fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. Okay. Don't mean I ain't still sore at you squabbling sandpipers. 
We fixed it so you can come and go between the realms whenever you please. You're very welcome. Go. This here's my family, and I mean much to you, but it means plenty to me. It does too mean something to me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made up with my clunkerhead brother. Five million moonbeams. I didn't realize the Hulk brothers were back in business. We're even cohabitating like a proper family. So don't tell me. <laughs> okay, well, well, then you can help me at the forge while you spill everything. Now, Brock, ain't you gonna introduce me to this tall glass of milk you got for a bodyguard? Of <laughs> course I'm gonna. That's Kratos. Though you can call him whatever pops into your head. Kratos, Lunda. We go back. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. You gonna lurk all day or are we gonna do something? Just enjoying the conversation, Brock. It's lactose free milk to you, by the way. Sure, I'm open. Gauntlet of Radiance. Ready when you are. What? You just came to stare? I did. All right, Mimir wants to talk to Freyr. We wish this camp kept secret. Understood? I will not compromise it. No, we wouldn't dare. Good. Oh, look at the, look at the dog piggy. Oh, is he just a big fat doggy? Who's a, who's a good piggy doggy? Oh, chonky. Oh, I want to pet the dog. Sony, let me pet the dog. Gosh. Let me pet the dog. You've accomplished many wonderful things with this game. A little a little circle to pet the dog would, would do wonders for your boy. This went from game of the year to game of the week. Just kidding. I mean, I like, I, I love petting dogs in games, but not the end. A lot of stuff I can't do anything with yet. <clears throat> Reminds me of a Vanaheim song I heard long ago. Which rune was that? Uh, oh God, I don't know which one it is. The codex is a little frustrating. Because I don't know the veneer lullaby. Or Valheim, Vanaheim lullaby. Oh, I bless the rains of Vanaheim. Words from a traditional Vanaheim song in Greece. The rain served as a reminder to worship the gods. Do people of these lands worship the rain alongside their gods? Da 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 da. I hope we get to go to Totoheim at some point. Da 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 da
Dun 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 dun. If it it would be awesome if there was like a God of War version of that song playing in the background when you're in this camp when you find that. <laughs> all right, all right. Enough of this. Enough of this silly business. Sorry, we got off on the wrong foot there, stranger. I'm pretty used to only seeing Ace here in these parts. Don't typically get friendly faces. That, that is a friendly face, right? His name is Kratos, and no, the Aesir are in Vanaheim. <laughs> yeah, we've been occupied since... Yeah, I lost count. What is your plan? We still got working on it. Mm -hmm. Brother, I think I could be of use here. If my counsel is welcome. Well, I'll take what I can get. Your mission will go considerably smoother without me in the mix. Come back for me when you're done. Really? Hey, Kratos. As long as you're working for my sister, carefully you don't screw up. She's not too big on forgiveness. Don't I know it. A bit late for that one, I'm afraid. All right, let's see what we've got here. Tell me about your army. Oh, you're looking at it. What, you five? Against Odin's army? Well, six, if you count the dog. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know their numbers? Oh, yeah, numbers, movements, outposts. We have good intel. Uh, just short on help. I see. Well... Let's have a look at the map then. You're gonna have to hold them up to it, bud. You need me to show you how to do it? I can show you how to do the Mimir thing. I know it's a little weird. But he can't just, you know, swivel his head like us like us common folk. You gotta grab that rope. No? Okay. Well, you, you figure it out then. Mamir, tell him what you need, brother. I'm out of here. I'm going through these doors. I'm going to enjoy a nice silent mission. Now that the distractions are out of the way. I have words if you would hear them. Speak then. With anger you feel for your brother. I know it well. You have a brother? His name was Demos. When we were boys, he was taken by two gods obsessed with prophecy. The gods of my homeland seldom left survivors. So by the time I learned he had lived, it was too late for amends. His anger poisoned him against me. But I never stopped loving my brother. You think my anger is irrational? You've known Freya for mere moments and already you're taking his side? I am not taking his... No. You're just sharing your thoughts on a subject you know nothing about. She's kind of right. Uh, uh, Kratos just did the same thing that Brock did. Everybody wants to have something to say about something they've only known for about two seconds. This is a really big problem. Just in real life is that people get a headline and they think they know the story brock did it kratos has done it i do give him credit for asking if he could speak up i do give him credit for that and i think that her defensiveness probably has a little bit to do with the intensity that is built around this in her shitty situation she also didn't let Kratos finish. I would be curious to know where he was going with that. At the same time, everybody's going for the jugular on this brother stuff with her. Everybody's trying to get in on the, like, on her world and, like, tell her what to do. And that's not the way to connect with her right now. No, nobody is being curious about her. And that's frustrating. We 
We continue our mission to free Freya from her curse. If she will not forgive her own brother, what chance is left? She will forgive me. You, she doesn't have to forgive you, dude. But if that's his agenda on this, of like, you need to forgive your brother because he thinks that there's a chance that she'll forgive him, like, he's, he's coming from the wrong place on this. Now, can we talk about how freaking cute this thing is real quick? Look at this guy. What's up, dude? Hi. Would it have been better to specifically ask if he could speak about trying to con uh, connect with her so that she could have a chance to get informed consent? Yeah, I mean, he could have said I have words, and if she said, like, speak up, if he's like, are you cool with me sharing some information about my own sibling? I saw that you were frustrated when Brock talked about his stuff with Sindri, and I don't want to overstep my bounds. At the same time, I do feel like there's something I could potentially offer you if you're willing to hear it. I think that's probably the better way for him to go about it. Rather than just dumping right into it. See, the thing is, is like Freya is smart enough to know that people have ulterior motives for everything they do. Because she has ulterior motives for everything that she does. So when you get into this like uh, assumption land around these things, we, we see people misfiring like crazy. Nobody has asked Freya questions. Everybody's bulldozing their way in with thoughts and ideas. If I was her, I'd be frustrated too. Nobody's asked what's her thought process on this. Where are you at with your brother? What's making it difficult for you to reconcile with him? Not that I'm suggesting that you should. You know, like... Freya's therapist might say, you know, I noticed that there's a pattern that when somebody does something that you perceive to be a slight, you have a hard time reconnecting with those people. What's that about? Is that about a way of trying to maintain control when you relinquish some of it by trusting somebody? Because trust is a act of control, by the way. Withholding of trust can be a way to control. So, like, you could point that out, but Kratos can't point that out to her. Not right now. He doesn't have enough rapport. Neither does Freyr, neither does Mimir. Nobody has the rapport with her. So you ask questions. You be curious about her. What's going on? Why is this tough? And I'm, I'm struck by the lack of curiosity that people seem to have about Freya. People make a lot of assumptions about her. Including Kratos. Cool that he was willing to be vulnerable there, but... The thing is, is like, I don't know that he knows this or that he's actively trying to do this, but there's a chance that Kratos is trying to humanize himself to her also by talking about having had a brother, by making Atreus ever present, stuff like that humanizes him a little bit. Maybe he thinks that's going to make it harder to kill him, but she's shown that that's not really the case. I hope we get more dialogue here. This is this is awesome. Like I'm really glad that we're going on this journey with her. Oh, I don't want to go that way. I want to stray farther from the objective. This does have some similarities to uh, where we were with Atreus.
be here. An ancient. Whoa. Oh, we gotta fight him. Okay. Well, that's fun. Alright, I didn't do anything. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fellas, you still want to fight after you watch me do that shit? You kidding me? You fought them before, haven't you? Figures. I mean, I don't, I don't really know why you're surprised. I'm literally god of war, Freya. If there's fighting to be done, I've done it. Oh, I got a chaos flame? I Hell yeah. What you're doing. Trying to play on my sympathies in the hope I let you live. I am only trying to help. The mistakes of the past need not be repeated. I don't need to hear about your mistakes. I've made enough of my own. Thanks. I mean, it's her right to decide that she doesn't want to do anything with Kratos' goodwill. I mean, it, it kind of makes her a little less sympathetic, though. I mean, if she decides that she still wants to try to kill me after I help her, that is her prerogative. And Kratos at any time could say, you know what, screw you, then I'm out. But... I don't know how much good it does her... to hold on to this the way that she is. Again, I mean, who knows? Maybe she still just wants to die. Like, maybe the thing we're leading her towards is death. I don't know. Oh, shit. Oh, it's so cool that they leave footprints in the mud. Look at that. That's cool. Okay. Oh. I was just mad. I had to do something with it.
Everyone is so eager to advise me. As if any of you know me or what I need. The biggest loss in my life is due to you saving me when I specifically told you not to. Well, it was my family, my mess. I know Falder wasn't perfect, but he was mine. I know. You know? You think you can even begin to understand the pain of losing a child? Yes, I do. There was another. Before Atreus? Her name was Calliope. Calliope. What happened? It was long ago. Never mind. I shouldn't have asked. He was willing to talk about it. Now, right back at Freya, right? Like, she's making assumptions, too. This is the problem. Human communication, or human to Falcon, or God to Falcon communication struggles and stalls when we operate on assumptions. You should generally try to seek clarity. Curiosity-based questions are your friend in basically every social situation that you could possibly be in besides like a crisis. So ask, asking is fine because Kratos can say, I don't want to talk about it. He didn't say he didn't want to talk about it. I think the reason that Freya decided and said, I shouldn't have asked, I don't think that had anything to do with her reading Kratos' response here, by the way. What that had to do with was in realizing that Kratos has lost a child, again, it humanizes Kratos. It means that there was real gravity to the decision that he made when he killed Balder. So now all of a sudden, Kratos is somebody that can actually empathize with her and more importantly, that she can empathize with. Because he says, yeah, I lost a kid too. So I do know what that is. I do understand the weight of this. In fact, it probably hurts me a lot, the fact that I had to kill your child because I know what it was like to lose my own. Well, now all of a sudden Freya's like, oh, crap. He does get it. And that brings her closer to him, and it starts to bump against this narrative that he's an absolute asshole for everything he did and he killed with indiscretion. She's got to, she has to go into the distance again. So what does she do? She breaks the conversation off so that she doesn't have the opportunity to hear more that's going to bump against her own narrative. So that I shouldn't have asked about this or I shouldn't have brought it up was more for her rather than Kratos. And I would argue she should have brought it up. She can't ask. And he was willing to talk about it. You don't have to shut it down. Let him say he doesn't want to talk about it. But they're making a lot of assumptions and that's killing them. He is not what she has assumed him to be. And I think she is frustrated that he seems to be working to see her in a less myopic way than she's expecting him to. Wow, that vine really caught that, huh? Their level of gendered societal issues with the approach to Freya's issues, they seem to be in charge and with ask later, or they would never ask me for a help approach. That seems rather heavy handed, almost dismissive of her power and autonomy an individual that just quickly pisses them off. If Brock were there to interject or Kratos or something similar. Uh, maybe. I don't know that I would necessarily go in that direction, but I wouldn't avoid it entirely. It's hard to say. Just as a reminder to chat, please be very careful with discussing stuff so as to not inadvertently spoil. Err on the side of caution, please. Whoa. Oh. Oh. 
Oh shit. Remember, it won't do any good to attack while your shields are up. I'm well aware of that, Chris. These look like the people from those Avatar movies. Don't tell me what to do, Freya. Oh, I really did have to do it. Okay. Kratos is a straight predator, man. We need to get to that watchtower. We'll have to go through the valley this way. Ba -da -ba. Ba -da -ba. I know your son's story. You should know my daughters. In the service of a cruel god, I was tricked into destroying a village, not knowing my own wife and child were there until their blood stained my hands. I swore revenge. That's... I can't imagine. I paid back their blood a thousand times and burned Olympus to the ground. Yet, the guilt remained. Perhaps you will kill me, Freya. But it will bring you no peace. Perhaps it is not peace I seek. What is it you seek, Freya? No? Not gonna ask her? <laughs> oh, brother. <sighs> She's not wrong, man. Everybody tells her what to do and no like nobody asks. And it's driving me nuts. Ask her, dude. Oh, 
All those times I found you. Why'd you refuse to fight me? Every outcome would mean defeat. What does that mean? I have never wished you harm, Treya. You helped us. You saved Atreus when he was sick. I did not wish to live with killing you any more than I wished to die. I see. Ah, oh, it's so cool. So good. So good. So good. You helped me, now I'm helping you, but we can't bring Balder back. pause really quick to address something because I've seen this in YouTube comments as well. I am aware that Kratos does not possess the skills to communicate in the way that I want him to. I am fully aware of that. But if I take Kratos at face value and don't provide any critique, it completely shuts down my ability to do basically any analysis. Like, the, the the point of this is not for me to take all the characters at face value and just go, yeah, Kratos grunted there because he wanted to acknowledge what Freya said. That's just not interesting, right? So I am aware that there are limitations to these characters' abilities. The point of these playthrough, playthroughs is for me to use these examples to try to help people understand real-life situations. So I am aware of I get a YouTube comment on almost every video about this, and I see it in Twitch chat periodically. Like, it would be so boring if all I did was sit here and go, well, yeah, Kratos grunted in acknowledgement again, because that's what he does. Like, that would, that would just add absolutely nothing to these playthroughs. So, I am fully aware of his limitations. And also, there are times where he does communicate, and he has it in him. And I want to hold him accountable to a higher standard because I think all of us should be held to a higher standard as it relates to communication. So me trying to help Kratos along here is a lesson to all of us that, like, for example, when he's hanging on that wall and he shares that story and then she starts to let on that maybe that's not what she wants, his, him saying nothing there is like the worst possible thing he could do other than like give her advice that she doesn't want. Like we need to be curious about people. We like sometimes being silent when people say something vulnerable isn't is a punishment. It it stops them from wanting to share more. She left the door open there in a way that she very rarely has done so far in this game and, and Kratos said nothing. And the reason that I think that that's a problem is because it it comes off, whether he intends it or not, it comes off as if him telling that story is self-indulgent. As opposed to in the spirit of a conversation with her. Because if he says that, the guilt never went away. And she goes, well, maybe, you know, maybe that's not what I'm trying to get rid of. And then he goes, well, what is it you're trying to get rid of? Now they're having an engaging conversation where Kratos was willing to be vulnerable. But instead, he says nothing. And she's like, okay, well, I guess he doesn't give a shit. And he told me that story on his because he has his own... He's got his own agenda here in telling me that story. It doesn't come off as connective. Now it comes off as persuasive. And you don't want that to happen when you disclose something like that. I'm aware that Kratos doesn't see a therapist to help him understand the impact of that. But that's why I'm here. Nothing. And so close to the village. Their soul makes their allies invulnerable. They will not let you pass. Unless you destroy them all. Oh. Alright, well. You shut the hell up, stupid thing. Good night, Skog. village. My heart 
they recognize it. I used to play hide and seek with Freya and the crops. We'd spend afternoons stealing honey bread from the Grand Hall. At harvest time, we'd dance and feast until the sun rose. It was all so simple. Why did I have to come back here? And be reminded of all this. Okay, silence isn't bad here. Kratos has to be on point with understanding what's happening here. He's got to he got to lock it in, brother. You got to lock it in because this is in, this is immensely vulnerable for her being that she is exposed in a way that she probably in some ways was not anticipating and the, the and Kratos is with her. This is a time of distress. People who are proximal and available to you in times of distress are incredibly important, whether you want them to be or not. So the person she hates more than anybody else right now is the figure that is present with her while she is reliving these vulnerable moments from the past. Kratos needs to be very careful not to overstep his bounds here and invalidate that or be dismissive of it or interject his own experience here and instead should either shut up like he did, which is great, being silent and letting her process that, in this case is cool because she wasn't speaking directly to him, or finding it in him to express a degree of empathy. Something like, I hear a lot of sadness in your voice when you talk about this, or what's it like to have to reflect on these things? Like he could ask curiosity-based questions or engage with empathy, but the last thing he needs to be doing here is to give her advice, to talk about his own experience or whatever. He's going to put a lot of karma in the bank, whether Freya is willing to show him or not, by being a consistent and reliable figure here while she's processing this stuff. And it's very important for him to understand that. You need to know your audience. You need to know their context. If she's letting on what that is by opening up here, even if it's inadvertently, even if it's not directed directly at Kratos, you got to observe that stuff. Whether she wants to or not, she is inadvertently connecting with Kratos because of what he shared. She can't unknow what he shared. And so in her moments here of silence and reflection, I have no doubt that there is a part of her that is reflecting on what Kratos has told her. And that is potentially going to create some connective tissue, even if it's not overtly available to us. She can't just ignore the fact that she learned this about him. As much as she may want to. I just can't get over how detail rich these environments are. Holy hell, man. It's just so good. The Grand Hall. It's in ruin. May Freya never waver. The other half is missing. May she protect us always. Freya's people loved her deeply. They seem to have abandoned this village long ago. Whether by choice or by force is unclear, but I feel the words have soured in her absence. Yeah, I mean, she An has... adage, if you will. You can get through over here! She has a very similar... arc... that Kratos has. Her primary role primary role through which she understands her existence in the world relative to other people is caregiver is protector and for caregivers and protectors often their own children are prime in terms of where they load a lot of that community is important too but balder was so not only did kratos take away her child he took away her sense of her ability to protect her child. The same reason why Kratos is so protective of Atreus, because if you kill Atreus, he loses it, right? Now, this is his second child that he couldn't protect. So, not only 
did she lose Balder? Then with all of these events, now she hasn't protected her village. Now her people are gone. Her entire purpose has been destroyed. And the parallels to what we saw with Anger Bodo when she was dealing with the fact that she handed the marbles over to Atreus and then her purpose was gone is happening in a similar way with Freya, where her entire purpose and understanding of herself is gone and she's having to grieve the loss of that and she's having to figure out what to do. And maybe the last person she has available to protect is herself. And because we're not asking her what it is, we don't know exactly what it is that she's protecting at this point. But who she is and how she's constructed her narratives of what she is has been completely turned upside down, and that would scramble any of us. We clutch to our roles very heavily because they give us consistency and reliability. We know who we are, even if we don't necessarily like it. A lot of caregivers will bitch about caregiving, but you try to take away the caregiving and they have, they want no part of it. <laughs> right, and it was to her detriment to an extent as well, because I'm sure there were probably some people she tried to care for that she wishes she didn't. But her sense of duty and obligation led her to make behavioral choices that weren't in her best interest. I hear them inside. Get ready to clear them out. Oh, I'm ready. That was badass. It wasn't enough what Odin did to me. He's desecrated every memory I have of home. Be glad you have a home to remember fondly. In Sparta, we were taken from our homes as children and raised in the Agoji. We marched though we drowned, fought for scraps or starved. Our elders beat us till we could not stand. At night, we made our way home, alone. Or were food for wolves. That is how Spartans are made. There is a phrase that I encourage every single person watching this, whether live or on the VOD or on TikTok, to remove from your vernacular entirely including the implication it's the phrase at least when people share something difficult for themselves if you start your next response with the word at least you are going to invalidate the shit out of some and you are either going to one up them or you're going to try to silver lining them and you're going to completely whiff it is a terrible phrase. And that is what Kratos just did. 
She shared something difficult, and he implied the at least by saying, well, at least you didn't grow up in Sparta, where the old people pummeled us into a pulp, and we didn't get to gain a sense of self or autonomy in our environment. Be glad you didn't have that. Her struggles matter. Relativity is important to understand, but also if you want to connect with people, one-upping them or silver lining what they say is useless in forming a connection with them and actually understanding what people have to offer. Instead of saying at least, ask a question. Ask a curiosity-based question. What was that like for you is a great way to start it, but stay as far as you possibly can away from the phrase at least as a starter to your response when people express vulnerability or difficult. You will save yourself a lot of heartache in your interpersonal relationships if you do that. You're not helping you say that. Now, if she said that phrase and then said, what was your context growing up like? Then yeah, share it, dude. But that's a big whiff. The big whiff on Kratos' part. I think the reason that this is happening, by the way, is because Kratos' desire to have Freya understand him is clouding his judgment on these interpersonal, like, connection points here. Like, he has an agenda here, which is for her to not kill him so he can protect Atreus. And that is clouding his judgment when he's listening to what she has to say because he likely thinks that what that's doing is... One, telling her that she doesn't have it so bad, and two, gives her empathy for how terrible his experience was. And that she hopefully sees his current behavior as juxtaposed against that history. But she doesn't possess the experiential knowledge or the understanding of Sparta to fully appreciate that in the way that Kratos does. So that's even more why it's a big whiff here. In relation to a few comments, how does one either disentangle or create a new purpose if you lose your sense of belonging that was tied to a role that's been lost? You be curious about your environment. You seek out other options. Observe what other people do. Ask yourself if the role that you had originally taken on is one that you wanted to take on versus one that you took on because of necessity. But it, it's a painful process sometimes, but just lean into it. Be curious about it. Ask yourself questions. Try stuff out. Experiment. Oi. All right. Um, can I go down there? I don't think I can. That had to have been a loading screen. Ooh, got me some dwarven steel. Hey, there's a forge. Where are you at, Brock? There's a chicken. What's up, chicken? behave similarly to the scorn poles we found in the foothills of Midgard ages ago. Uh, can I walk through this? <laughs> nope. Ah! 
Is that my first death? What a what a terrible way to go. These plants behave similarly to the scorn holes we found in the foothills. Oh right, I remember this. Okay, you gotta like freeze these guys up and then okay. Yep. I remember. Can we relate that so with Freya losing her identity like this, can we relate that to some kind of thing that can cause a midlife crisis? Yeah, I mean it they're similar. They're both generally identity based. Sometimes they're about things that we either did or didn't do. But sure, yeah, I think you could draw that parallel if you wanted to. Well, considering how Spartans are made, it's no wonder you turned out as you did. Your fate was sealed from the start. Fate can be overcome. I used to think so. When the Norns told me of my son's fate, I thought I could change it. You know well how that worked out. The Norns. The fates of these lands. That's right. You defy prophecy at your own peril. Other than the four the Thor fake out death? Oh man, I didn't even realize that that was going on. Bummer, man. I mean I am playing on the easiest difficulty, so I'm not really that impressed with the fact that I haven't died yet, but still, bummer. A shield bathed in radiant light of a thousand dying stars. Force of the cosmos. So well, that sounds awesome. The lunar shield. Hell yeah. Atreus would agree with you about prophecy. He rushes blindly to a fate the giants foretold, disappears for two days, trying to prove he is their champion, fabled to fight at Ragnarok. What? I know all the Ragnarok prophecies. There's no champion of the giants. It is one glow concealed. Because of this champion, the realms are saved at Ragnarok. Only Asgard falls, and Odin with it. So all this time... Odin's obsession with every detail of Ragnarok, he's been missing a crucial piece. Ha. Well done, Groa. That's interesting. So Kratos has made, well, I mean, as I would understand, he, I mean, he's made an assumption about what Atreus was doing. He has to be careful. Because if Kratos operates on that assumption about what Atreus was doing and he's locked himself into that and believes that Atreus telling the truth is Atreus confirming his assumption, he is off base. A lot of people do this. You don't want to do that. You make assumptions about people's information that they're withholding and you're wrong. It could bite you in behind. So he could have an idea of what it was that Atreus was doing, but he also needs to approach Atreus with as much of a, I don't know what you did. This is just what I thought you did as he possibly can, because if he is locked into that assumption, he's going to experience a lot of dissonance when Atreus tells him the real story, if he chooses to tell him the real story. But Kratos also could do himself a favor by sharing that assumption with Atreus. Hey, dude, because you're not telling me what you did, here's what I think you were doing. And that often can be a good way to get people to actually explain what they did because people are usually quick to prove you wrong if you assume the wrong thing about their experience. Just a word to the wise. Also, the PlayStation 5 controller's haptic feedback when you do stuff is ridiculously good. 
<laughs> like the way that felt like rope while I was sliding down that in my hands was so neat. Atreus will not be a pawn of prophecy. You still stand against fate, even with victory foretold. I will not march my son to war. He is no Spartan. I would keep it that way. You would speak to me of protecting your child? Is my tragedy not enough of a lesson? Fighting fate is a waste of the precious time we're given to spend with them. We never knew that would come along and cut it short. Ooh, throwing, ooh, throwing some shade. Ooh. Who knows? You know, maybe some of this, if we wanted to get real existential about this while Kratos hangs on the wall, if we wanted to get really existential about this. Some of the frustration that seems to play as an undertone in this entire world is the idea that your future is foretold, that prophecy exists. That the frustration and the tension in living in this world is the idea that you have access to how it will end and that your compensatory behaviors with that knowledge can sometimes become even more problematic than if you let things play out. It's this real tension between free will and destiny, predetermined fate. And if that's where the anger lies and that's where the frustration is in that existential pocket, then it would completely make sense why everybody diverts it out into the proximal relationships and bodies that are available to them because that feels basically insurmountable. Every time people try to exert influence on that, they come up disappointed. So let's take it out on each other then because the idea that we could exert influence on that seems impossible. That has become increasingly clear throughout this game that everybody's got that in mind and it's all about how much knowledge do you have and how useful is it for you to actually know what it is. We saw what happened when Atreus found this out. It scrambled him. Kratos seeing it, scrambling. Freya knows a prophecy, scrambles her. Everybody gets messed up when they know what their future holds. As badly as people want to know what's coming, sometimes not knowing what's coming is what allows you to be more present and make the decisions that you can make in the given moment. I mean, really, like, there's a, there's a bit of an after-school special moral there, which is be as present as you possibly can be, because if you spend too much time in the future, you're wasting what you have the ability to exert influence on now. Find a way to cross the broken bridge. What about the crane? Can you turn it somehow? Freya, don't do this to me. Yeah, you want to you want to get exact your revenge on me. Backseat my backseat my game. That's a really good way. You really want to feel better about it. Tell me exactly what to do when I'm presented with a puzzle. She's smart. She gets it. She knows what's up. Can you swing that torch to the other side and burn the bramble blocking your path? Yes. 
I can. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see. Can I... Yeah, there we go. Alright, now while this thing swings, let's see if I can... Oh, shit. alive be squeamish about war after all the gods you've killed i have seen enough war to know the cost and i don't after the price i paid to end one never Look around you, Kratos. see what happens when you don't fight a true evil all right so your beef is with odin so is mine <laughs> You got to be real careful when you attempt to read in between the lines on people. Freya is so frustrated and angry in so many different directions that I think it's actually clouding her ability to evaluate the things that Kratos is saying to her. She's making assumptions based on her own schema about what she thinks Kratos is and some of the interactions she's had with other people throughout her life. And what I mean by this is when Kratos says something, her consistent response to him has been, what, you think I don't think about that? Which means that she is reading an implication in what Kratos is saying that when he's talking about something, he is suggesting that she doesn't understand what he's saying. Or that he knows more than she does. Which again, I think comes from all of these interactions she's had with other people. She needs to be really careful too here to not just assume that when Kratos opens his mouth, he's doing so to diminish her experience or suggest that she's incompetent. And I think she's steeped in incompetence as it relates to her role as a protector and as a mother. And so she's projecting that incompetence out into corners of the room that she doesn't need to project it out into where she thinks that when Kratos interacts with her, it's just another highlight of her incompetence as a person, as a protector. And it's, and it's like, no, I'm just telling you what I know. I'm not trying to over explain your experience. I'm trying to share what I have to offer. Your assumption that I am explaining your incompetence is on you to have to deal with because that's not where I'm coming from. Be mindful of the way that you read between the lines because if you're projecting onto people, you're going to make assumptions again that are going to misfire and lead to interpersonal issues rather than health. He did hit her with it at least. It's true. Um, and maybe it plays a part of it, but the right, point still stands. Is that she she needs to be careful not to read into his intentions on these things as him trying to like overly explain her experience. There's a difference between him invalidating her experience because he's just not willing to be curious about it, and then him God splaining it. 
and suggesting that he knows more about her experience than she does. But her 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 sense of incompetence as somebody who failed in her role shows up in a lot of the ways that she interacts, particularly with Kratos. Oh yeah, she's absolutely trying to keep distance from him. 100%. Connecting to Kratos is a real difficult thing for her. That's one of Odin's captains. Be ready. Oh, I'm ready. Whoa. Ah, I thought I rolled out of the way. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. The glaive thrown by Iron Jar is synonymous with death. It is said there is no surface it cannot cut. Upgrades to increase the number of chakrams thrown. I just whooped that guy's ass. He didn't stand a chance. And we're going to find out what's through this big old door he was guarding in part 12. YouTube, thank you so much for taking the time to watch part 11. I am grateful for your support. Leave a like on the way out. Leave a comment if you feel so inclined. Cliffhangers. Well, that's Fimble winner for you. I'm really, really grateful for your support. And uh, I would love it if you came and watched me on Twitch sometime and hung out with us. And you should also follow the links down in the description. If you are binging the series, I will see you at part 12. And if you're waiting for the next one to come through, we'll get it out to you as soon as we can. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day wherever you are. See you on the next one.